we interrupt your regularly scheduled Ember's Reading Room for an Ember's Reading Room. A gift Ember's Reading Room. Uh, th those of you who listen to Ember's Reading Room may recall that I mentioned a particular book that I was now going to be on the hunt for. Well, barely after that episode went up, a, a very kind subscriber by the name of Fan of the Gourmet tracked it down and I am now holding a copy of Shimmery in my hands, courtesy of Fan of the Gourmet. You may recall that Fan of the Gourmet also provided us with a copy of Cowpoke Clyde and Dirty Dog. That was a sponsored episode. I was not aware of that series and author. Uh, but this was purely out of the kindness of their heart, so thank you very much. And now on to the book. This is Shimmery, written by Stephen Cosgrove and illustrated by Robin James. I haven't read this since elementary school. I really hope it holds up. <laughs> kind of like watching 80s cartoons. Those tend to be the 80s things ever. Yes. Jason and the Wheel of Warriors. Dedicated to Deanne and Mo Morris. They have shared with me more than I can repay. Steven. Ooh, very pretty art. Well, I don't know that Robin James has ever drawn a bad picture that got published. I like how you phrase that. Well, I know everyone has to learn and everyone has an off day. Mm-hmm. But this is a lovely reflective image. In a mirror of sunrise glitter, Dawn was born again in a land of crystalline splendor. As the sunshine crept across the diamond mountains, it shimmered from the crystal trees and flowers that made up this wondrous land. For you see, all living things in this land were cast either from glass, diamond, or crystal. The only colors were splashes of blue, silver, and gold. Okay, we're definitely not in Windsong. Yeah. In this magic land, many strange crystal creatures frolicked in the dancing lights of day. There were crystal-like birds called glimmerings, smiling little lizards called beamers, and, most beautiful of all, horse-like creatures called lytosaurs, who had wings made of delicate diamonds so they could fly wherever the eye could see. A very nice drawing. All of the animals are unique and in shades of kind of uh, a light blue. I was trying to remember. I had a particular name for that color, but I can't remember right now. And the wings are very dragon slash bat-like. Yes, the, the lightosaurs look like they could be the servants of a particular princess. Oh, yeah, I finally got that reference. I was saying that to Lux before I ever got my hands on this book <laughs> as an adult. So I had my hands on it as a kid. The youngest of all the lightosaurs was called Shimmery. She was very small, like a precious stone, and as curious as a cat. She would spend all of her days chasing after rainbows or trying to catch the sun. Hmm. You know, the wings also kind of remind me of the way they rendered Thestrals. Though the horses look like horses. Not skeleton horses like Thestrals do. Lightosaurs are very much horse-like, um, but they do have a more leoine tail. Yeah, I've noticed that. That's why I said dragon, because that tail really says dragon to me with those wings. Mm -hmm. Everything would have stayed all sparkle and glitter in this magic place, had not Shimmery, as she was flying about one day, discovered a small pile of dust caught in the corner of a crystal rock. Well, not only had she never seen dust before, but the color of it was most amazing. This dust wasn't crystal blue or silver, but rather a grayish brown. She studied it from side to side and then rushed off to tell her fellow creatures what she had found. The way that's phrased, it's like it's her fault that there's suddenly something that's not of crystal. You'll see. Mm -hmm. At first, the other creatures didn't believe the little lightosaur. The mere thought of something new was just impossible. Finally, they decided to humor her and reluctantly followed her to the crystal rock. Sure enough, just as Shimmery had told them, there was that pile of dust. None of them had ever seen anything like it before. Just as they prepared to sweep it away, the dust settled, and there, 
nestled on the rock was a pearl-shaped seed. Interesting. Oh, look, there's the cover. Except there's an extra... What were those lizards called again? <laughs> beamers. There's an extra beamer in it. See, the beamer would be right here in the middle of the cover. Yes, also the angle's slightly different, and you don't have the full background. Yeah, they scaled it differently, too, because these horse heads are more over the beamer's head here. Actually, no. They're still different. Yeah, this horse head's lower. Mm-hmm. Flytosaur. Thank you. Well, the creatures didn't like this one little bit. Not only was there a pile of dust, which was unheard of, but also a seed, the likes of which they had never seen before. We can't have this, said the leader of the Lytosaurs. It must be destroyed. Oh, yes, cried the Glimmerings and the Beamers. Destroy the seed before it harms us. I think I'm getting the moral of this story. Perhaps. Shimmery stood there for a moment and then stomped her feet angrily. No, she said. Why should we destroy it just because we don't know what it is? Oh, Shimmery, said the leader patiently. Look at it. It's not blue, silver, or gold. It's not even crystal. Please, please, cried Shimmery. Let me take care of the seed. If something starts to happen, you can destroy it. The leader thought for a moment and finally agreed. After all, with Shimmery watching, nothing bad could happen. It also, in this picture, the beamer looks much larger compared to Shimmery. I know some of that's perspective. Yeah, I was going to say, though Shimmery's further back, though she's also closer to the point where the lizard should be, yeah, especially since Shimmery should be almost the size of this, the um, crystal pillar where the dust is. Yep. True to her word, Shimmery stayed near the dust and the pearl-shaped seed day in and day out. Then, one day, the seed crackled, creaked, and groaned. As she watched in amazement, a small shoot, ever so slowly, reached out to the sun. Most amazing of all was its color, the likes of which she had never seen. The color green. I love the way you're reading this. <laughs> With a flip of her tail and a twitch of her ears, Shimmery flew into the air and rushed to find the other creatures. After she told them what she had seen, they all rushed fearfully back to the rock. I knew we should have destroyed it, cried the beamers. Look at it, shuddered the glimmerings. You can't see through it like crystal. It just has to be evil. I think I'm getting the moral of this story, though it's being told in a very delightful way. The leader of the Lytosaurs looked around and then shouted in alarm, Oh no, we're all catching its color. Sure enough, the small green plant had been reflected over and over again in the crystal formations. Everything had turned a distinct shade of green. Hmm, except for the background, but yeah. Well, we did need to have some contrast. Also, I'm pretty sure that that is daylight. Mm-hmm, which is why everything is turning green. Mm-hmm. The creatures all stomped and snorted and would have destroyed the plant if Shimmery had not come up with a daring plan. Look, she cried, the sun is setting. We can't destroy this thing in the dark. Who knows what terrible fate would befall us all if we couldn't see what we're doing? She's right, said the frightened leader of the Lytosaurs. We'll come back at the first light of day and destroy this thing. The other creatures were just as frightened as he and quickly agreed. So they hurried off to safely sleep the night away. Lytosaurs actually look quite good in green. Yes, they do. When she was sure that everyone was fast asleep, Shimmery quietly flew back to the crystal rock and the little green shoot. By the soft reflections of starlight, she carefully scooped up the pile of dust and flew to the highest peak of the Diamond Mountain. Scooped how? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, MLP logic, I claim. Yep. Look, I can grab this object. But, but, but that's a hoof. It was there that she safely hid the tiny bit of dust and the ever-growing plant. Knowing that it would be safe, she contentedly flew back to where the other creatures were sleeping. Yeah. That, the way you said that makes me go, hmm. Well, you see, they're still 
some book left, so. Yeah. At the first crack of dawn, all the creatures marched to where the little pile of dust had been. But much to their surprise, it was gone. Maybe it blew away in the night, mused Shimmery innocently. Who cares, asked the other creatures. We're just glad that it's gone forever. It was at that exact moment that the little plant began to bud and blossom, flooding the diamond mountain and the sparkling sky with the most beautiful red hue. Oh no, they cried. We're doomed. No, laughed Shimmery. Come with me and I'll show you that there is nothing to fear. The creatures, although very frightened, followed her to the top of the mountain. They all looked very good in shades of red as well. Yes. Both colors are very dragon-like. Mm-hmm. Oh. Nervously, they approached the spot where Shimmery had flown the night before. And there, even to her surprise, instead of the small green plant, stood the most beautiful red rose. As the creatures looked on in wonder, the sun began to rise in all its splendor, and colors of all sorts spread throughout the land. See, said Shimmery gleefully, you had nothing to fear but fear itself. Mm, not the moral I was going for, but good moral still. We haven't gotten to the poem yet. So from that day forward, Color was brought into the land of crystalline things, and all the creatures learned not to fear that which they didn't understand. Oh, there's the more I was going for. Also, Shimmery brought color to a barren land. I think she might be Rainbow Bright. Hmm. Or Wisp, as she was known before. Hmm. I love that in picture. <laughs> it's a very nice picture. So, if among your travels you find a thing unknown... Think of crystal shimmery and the seed that she was shown. So? Surprisingly, almost exactly like I remember. That's good. What was different? I almost want to say that it ended more like Buttermilk Bear, where there was still fear. Hmm. But it was a contrast between how many times I'd read it versus how many years it had been. Hmm. So I remember a lot of it. I even remember what order the colors went in. How? I wonder why this one is so much rarer than the others. If you look in the back um, where they list all of the books, the list is much shorter than it is in my other books, but a lot of the same books are listed. And Shimmery, I think Shimmery was listed. Hand me Flutter by, please. Yeah, Shimmery is listed on the longer list from the later books from the Serendipity series. And a lot of the books listed here are the same as the books in the longer list. I wonder if there's some weird thing going on with the copyright for it. I guess we'd always do a web search for it later. We could. How does the art hold up? Wonderfully. Like I said, Robin James has done some amazing work. You know, and... The Lidosaurs are much more horse-like than Flutterby, who is a bit more pony-like. And still you have excellent proportions, nice shading, the detailing on the wings, mm -hmm. and the total color scheme. It sticks very well with the writing because the writing says what the color scheme is and the book illustrations hold very true to that. The definition on the muscle for all the horses is... Well, Lidosaurs and even the other creatures is very nice. Like, there's a picture showing the chest of that, and you can see the chest muscles. That would be a beamer, ladies and gentle colts. See how the muscles are showing right there? Mm-hmm. And you can actually see it on the bird, too. Or uh, whatever they were called. Glimmering. So, Lidosaurs, Glimmerings, and Beamers. Three fantastical, mystical races that eat who knows what because apparently there's nothing organic except themselves and they're all sentient creatures who apparently get along. Yeah, and who says they eat if they're in a land of crystal and they're made of crystal? They may not need anything but sunlight. Yeah, entirely possible because they are definitely beings of magic, which means that they don't fall under any of the same rules. It's interesting how few shots we get 
multiple lightosaurs, especially full body shots. But I think the red tinged one is the only one that shows multiple full body lightosaurs because the image at the end is mainly heads and wings when they're gathered around the rows. And the earlier images that have multiples are pretty much just headshots. So most of the time, it's specifically shimmery that we see. Yeah, and what's really interesting in a picture I just noticed, look at where the eyes are looking. They're actually looking at the camera when their eyes are looking at the thing in the rock. Yeah, so in the image that correlates to the cover piece, the focus of the lightosaurs looks like it's on the reader, but the eye focus of the beamers looks more like it's at the dust in the crystal formation. I wonder if that's just because of the reference the artist used for the lightosaurs. Could be, and it also might have worked better stylistically. She may have drawn it originally where they were looking at the dust and the composition didn't look right. Or, since it seems to also be used for the cover, they may want the lightosaurs on the cover to be looking at the reader when you pick it up. Yes, but they did make alterations between the two images, so I would think redrawing the angle that the eyes were looking at wouldn't have been terribly difficult, says the non-artist. Yeah, this the serendipity books just hold up well. Thanks again to Fan of the Gourmet for uh, sending it my way. I had barely started to search. I, I had gone to one used bookstore, and that was as far as I had gotten. Uh, yep. And she kept giving me hints. Yes, Lux has heard me talk about this book for much longer than you have, gentle listeners. <laughs> So this has been Shimmery by Stephen Cosgrove and illustrated by Robin James. Gifted to Ember's Reading Room by Fan of the Gourmet. Thank you.